Hey guys, welcome to um, another tutorial for Pixelate Photographer. Sorry, I haven't actually been um, able to do a lot of this stuff recently because of all the natural disasters being going over here in Japan. So um, hopefully I can get back into everything now and, and start pushing some things through. So um, today we're going to start talking about um, a little bit of bleach bypass effect. Um, I actually needed it for work a couple of weeks ago and I actually didn't have Lightroom with me. And normally what I do is I use Lightroom to make all my bleach bypass effects like pretty much like everybody else does. Um, if you've got Lightroom obviously. But in my, in my, my uh, workplace I don't have Lightroom. Um, I only have Lightroom at home. So it was a case of like, damn, you know, how the hell do I make a bleach bypass effect in just Photoshop? So I fiddle around with a few things and this is um, what I came up with. Um, so to, to see what a bleach bypass effect looks like in Lightroom, you click that, that's what you're looking at right there. Um, you know, kind of almost washed out of the whites. Um, certain things, the blacks are still quite crisp though. But this area here is still quite washed out. If you go back to the other one, you can see it's quite washed out. And there you go. So in Lightroom, it's really easy. You just need to press the in default button. But if, you, if you've only got uh, Photoshop, then it's uh, quite difficult. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the preset for the bleach bypass, I'm going to actually save it. And we're going to stick it on the website as well. So, you know, if you ever need to come back and have a, you know, use it, you can you can just download it and uh, have a go. So here we go. Let's uh, get open Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop CS5. Um, but it'll probably work in pretty much every version of Photoshop. Oh, going all the way. Yeah, it'll probably go back all, you know, all the CS versions. It's quite easy to do. So, first of all, you need to make yourself a duplicate layer. Okay, so if you want to hit Command-J if you're on a Mac or um, Control-J if you're on a PC. So, as you can see there, it's added an extra layer. And then what I want you to do is actually pull that down to Overlay. There you go. As you can see, it's already starting to build up kind of like a, a crisp kind of colouring to it. You know, it's almost... Yeah, it's a, it's a lot uh, more contrasty than what it was. So now what we need to do is add some um, layer effects to those. So what we're going to go do is go down to here to the layer effects box. And we're going to add some hue and saturation. Actually, what we're going to do is take away the hue and saturation. So here's the box. So you can easily see it. And... What you want, want to do is actually take some of the saturation down. Now, this really depends on your photograph. You know, sometimes it's easier to do than others. Um, and so you've got to kind of judge it by eye and, you know, guess roughly where it is. So I would say around about here, 50 something for this picture. Because let's be honest, it's not a great picture to begin with, but <laughs> it's only used for an example. So as you can see, it's, it's killed a lot of the color um here and you know well that's pretty much where we need it it's around about here maybe around there actually a little bit more color okay and so what we need to do now is actually um play with the levels a little bit as well um you, you can do a lot through curves but maybe if you can do a bit of both then that works so if you go back to your um palette and you choose levels and here's your, your levels adjustments box. Um, normally I tend to find that if you pull this in a l just a very, very slight amount. And then the middle one, pull that up so that it becomes a lot lighter. Now at the moment it feels a little bit washed out. Um, and if we compare it to the other one in Lightroom, which has disappeared... See, it's still not quite there. It's it's getting there, but it's still not quite. Actually, it's not far off. But as you can see, a lot of the the kind of black area around here is kind of not as good as as the black area in the uh, Lightroom version. Um, another thing to note is that, you know, a lot of the colors here is 
um, is a lot more dark, a lot more dull compared to the ones here. These are more it's slightly magenta on my screen. So as you can see, yeah, it's quite a difference in this area. So what we need to do, sorry, flicking back and forth. Um, what we need to do then is um, just add some curves. Again, this is something you need to do by eye. Now you've got two choices. You can either be the quick gas guy and just keep that on RGB and just fiddle with this until you feel that it's right. Um, which that is actually not far off. <laughs> um, or what you can do is um, you can go through each ch channel and um, fiddle with them independently, which is always the, the best way to do it if you've got the time to do it. So, for example, you know, I said some of these reds are more dark here, but they're kind of pinky up here. Um, the pinky seems to be all right. It's just like the kind of darker areas. So maybe pulling a certain area down in this case. Kind of like that. That's not far off. Um, the other thing as well you should note is like this here in the background is a kind of bluey looking color almost. It's a bluey green. Um, whereas this is a more of a kind of red color now because we've adjusted the red channel. So what we can do then is, is just compensate a little bit for that. Just add a little bit of green. A tiny little bit of blue. Actually in this one it's a lot more white in the background actually. So we can actually go back to our levels, oh, go back to our levels a bit, and actually knock that back a little, a little bit. We don't need it that much, and then pull that up a bit. As you can see, we're not that far off, and back to the curves. And I think it needs a little bit more blue somewhere. That's not going to make it look rubbish. Maybe fill with the greens, maybe that's throwing it. Okay, we're not far off. I think maybe what we need to do is um I'm going to throw a um an exposure on here as well. Actually, no, I'm not. I take that back. I'm not going to throw an exposure on here. <laughs> Damn. Things you do. Um, what am I going to look for? Brightness or contrast. That's what I'm going to look for. Um, just add a tad contrast there. I think it still needs a bit more. Darken that off a little bit. Uh, it needs it lighter, doesn't it? And there you go. Pretty much right where we wanted to be. Not bad. I can live with that. That's not far off. So there you go. If you want to do a bleach bypass effect, just make sure you, you change your colors of your pinks. I've just realized that's off. But you get the idea. Um, if you want, if you don't have um, a copy of Lightroom, that's a, a really easy way to do it. And if you've only got a couple of minutes, you, know, you can do it if, you, if you've got the time. There you go guys, bleach bypass effect. If you've got any questions or if you want to um, ask us for a certain video, let us know. You know, obviously we can try and do our best to accommodate your needs. Um, and so yeah, um, hit us up online. We're at www.pixelatedphotographer.com And um, yeah, we've got a nice forum community like kicking up there, which is really good. There's lots of good people and... Um, Nobody's going to scream and shout at you if you've got questions. So um, please make sure you head on over and um, check us out. And that's me for today. Thanks, guys. So catch you later. Bye-bye.